Okay, I already promised you that uh, I would use the uh, sampling theorem by Patterson and Middleton uh, to come up with uh, a more efficient sampling than what we looked at up to now. And uh, to introduce that, first of all, this is the parallel if, uh, sampling scheme that we used up to now. And um, we had to choose the parameters Q um, larger or equal to omega over pi and P larger than omega. That meant that the angular spacing of the directions for the tomograph was pi over P. And uh, the uh, detector spacing was H, which was equal to 1 over Q, this should be a Q. Was it always a Q? It should be a 1 over Q. Okay, uh, so um, first of all, there was an observation that was made by engineers, and uh, they, they said we can improve the resolution of a tomograph by playing around with our array of sensors. So uh, if we uh, move, if we translate this array of sensors in each measurement, that means for each rotation, then uh, the images become better. So in our terms, that means they do not measure RF of theta k and SL, but they measure something like RF of theta k and SL plus epsilon k, where epsilon k is zero for k even, and uh, h over 2 for k odd. Now, um, the motivation for that, and maybe the explanation if you didn't get this, is the following. Um, usually, um, in, or in our parallel scheme, uh, we measure, well, let's take the black ones are, uh, the, um, are the lines that we measure in for one fixed position of the tomograph. Then we turn the tomograph around, angular spacing, pi over p, and measure the next integrals. Now, uh, if we fix these SLs like we did before, then the new integrals or the new lines along which we measure the function are almost exactly the same as before. I mean, assume that pi over p is very small, so we have a large resolution, then these lines will be almost the same. So the gain in information will be relatively small. We need it, right? We, we proved that uh, we need to uh, have a large p. But, um, well, um, it's, that doesn't seem to be a good idea. However, a better idea might be to shift these, uh, these lines a little bit to the right. So we're not uh, changing the spacing of the detectors. We're just moving everything a little bit to the side. And that means that now we're measuring, that was the old measure, that was the old measure, measurement. And now we go to the next angle and we measure completely different lines. Same as before, same angle, but we're moving the, uh, the lines along which we measure a little bit to the side, and that gives completely new lines, and uh, that gives us the idea, okay, there might be much more information in that than always keeping the array of sensors at the same point. Okay, um, now that doesn't seem to be covered by our sampling theory, but um, we'll do the following. Um, First of all, um, we have Rf equals 2G, like always, right? And I, all, all my, um, I parametrize that by the angle phi of the, um, of the unit vector theta of phi. Okay, uh, now we take the Fourier transform of G with respect to both variables. So forget at this point, forget about what I always said, whenever I do a G hat, G tilde, uh, whenever I do anything with G, it's all with, with, with respect to the second variable. At this point, it's with respect to both variables. Now, uh, that needs some explanation uh, because uh, in the, um, in the second variable, that's uh, um, g of phi, uh, phi and s, uh, g is in s, and the Fourier transform exists, so we can easily take the Fourier transform with respect to the second variable. Now, uh, with respect to the first variable, g is a periodic function and is definitely not in s, but 
in the exercises, you showed that in the distributional sense, the, uh, this, the, um, the Fourier transform of this function exists can be easily computed. It, uh, there's a, a strong connection to the Fourier series. And uh, so I will just neglect this problem. And um, um, I will assume that everything I'm doing now is meant in a distributional sense and uh, keeping the exercises in mind. That absolutely makes sense. OK. Um, so I take the Fourier transform with respect to both variables g hat of k and sigma and k reminiscent of the fact that it's actually a Fourier series what we're looking at. And um, I already showed you what comes out if I um, um, take the Fourier transform and plot that Fourier transform in a, uh, on, a, on a grid and that's the centered Fourier transform that we introduced before. Okay, um, now this is the um, Fourier, uh, Fourier transform of G, so that G hat of K and sigma with respect to both variables. And you see that the support of that function is not all over the plane. Uh, I should say that F was band limited, omega band limited with a band limit of 10, I think. And um, so the Fourier transform of the radon transform of that function is, well, obviously lies in a compact set, which looks like this one over here. Okay, uh, very long story, and I'm not going to tell you anything about it. It can be proved that actually this wedge over here is, um, the, um, is the support of the Fourier transform, of the support of the Fourier transform of the radon transform of a band limited function. Okay, so for an omega band limited function, the Fourier transform of G lies in, well, in this set which is defined by the set of all k and sigma. K is the uh, is this variable is the x variable here. Sigma is the y variable. With the, uh, with the definition that sigma, uh, absolute value of sigma is smaller than omega, and the absolute value of k is smaller than the absolute value of sigma. And that defines this compact set k over here. Uh, I should say that uh, this is a slightly simplified version of what is really true. Um, again, if you want to have a a look at um, how this is really done and what K really looks like, then uh, have a look at uh, the Book of Natural, which I linked to. It's in Theorem 3.1. And of course, to do that, you need a lot of Bessel functions and all this stuff. So um, I'm not going to go into detail about this. So I will just quote this fact. OK, um, now. Um, when, you, when I tell you that uh, the uh, support of the Fourier transform is in uh, some compact set, that hopefully reminds you of the sampling the uh, theorem by Patterson and Middleton. And it says that uh, if I take that uh, compact set K and translate it by vector 2 pi w to the minus transpose k1, k2, where k1 and k2 are integers. Uh, if the intersection between k and that set is uh, the empty set, so if, if they have no intersection, then g uh, is um, uniquely determined by the values of g times w k. Okay, that was uh, what you proved in uh, the uh, in the uh, in the exercises. Um, and uh, now let's look at parallel scanning again. And what does that uh, sc that sampling theorem mean for parallel scanning? Well, in parallel scanning, we uh, measure the uh, fully we measure the function g at points k one times pi over p and k two over q. Okay, um, so our function, so our matrix W obviously is pi over p, 0, 0, 1 over q. Yeah? With, with the, uh, multiplying that with an integer k gives us all the sample points that we need for parallel scanning. Okay, uh, now 2 pi to the w to the minus transpose is uh, obviously 
to p002 pi q. And uh, the uh, uh, now what we uh, need to satisfy to satisfy better, to satisfy this sampling theorem is that if we shift if we take that set k and shift it by two p to the right hand side or by two p q to the to the bottom, then there should be no intersection between k and that translate. Okay, uh, now obviously the upper right corner over here, that's omega, om that's the point omega, omega. So how much do I have to shift so that K and the shifted version have no points in common? Well, the shift needs to be larger than, well, two omega, right? I mean, if, we, if I shift this to the right, if that point over here is omega, omega, now I shift this to the right by two omega, then uh, that means there's no intersection. Okay, so the condition that we come up with is that 2p must be larger than 2 omega, and uh, that means that p must be larger than omega, and that's exactly what we came up with anyway for parallel scanning. Okay, um, that's fine. So uh, that, uh, that satisfies our, uh, the condition we already had. And next thing is uh, we could, um, what about the other direction? So if we move everything down below here, uh, then uh, again, we need to shift at least by, uh, need to shift down at least by two omega, then there will be no intersection. And so also here, the, uh, the condition is that two pi q must, uh, must be larger than omega. And uh, that means that q must be lar larger than omega over pi. And again, that's uh, the condition we already came up with. Okay, so that's great in a way, right? I mean, uh, what we already proved using Shannon's theorem uh, is now also proved using Patterson and Middleton. But it's not very satisfying because the result is exactly the same, so we could have stayed with Shannon anyway. However, um, probably we are not really satisfied for a different reason. And the thing is, um, what we did was, this was the original K. Let's take the black one over here as the original K. Now we moved everything a little bit to the side. Uh, so, uh, so we translated everything to the right using parallel scanning. So we come up with a red wedge over here. And uh, well, the other ones are here, the green one, here's the blue one and so on, right? I mean, these are the translated versions that should have no intersection with the original, um, with the original uh, set. And they don't, of course. But uh, there's lots of empty space. And uh, that means we do not really make use of the fact uh, that um, the Fourier transform of um, uh, of the of G is well, in, in, it's it is not a rectangle, right? It, but it, it's not um, uh, enclosed in a rectangle. K is not a rectangle, but there's much more to it. There's empty space over here. And somehow uh, we feel that this can't be efficient because we want, of course, we want this to be as tight as possible. And this isn't tight. There's lots of space when we move everything around. And um, so the question is, can we do better? Okay, of course we can do better. Because now, um, unfortunately, I exchanged the green and blue colors here. I'm sorry for that. Now, if we take the black set, which is still the original one, and move it up to the right in one direction, so that I move it up here, then I get the red one over here. And for the one that I move below, uh, I leave it at the same place. So um, um, I, I take this one down here. Okay, so where are then the other translates? Well, the other translates are I'm moving this one up, then like the blue one down. So I get this one over here. And you see what happens. Um, now I'm completely covering R2 perfectly, right? I mean, let me again tell you what are the, what are the movements here. We had a movement right and below, right and down. And here I have a movement right up 
and down. And if I do that, then I get from the black one, I get the blue one on one hand side. Moving up, I get the red one. Moving this one down, I get the green one. And you see everything is covered perfectly. OK, in a way, we would have the idea that this should be a more efficient scheme than the parallel one we already came up with. OK, so uh, let's now look at that. Um, what would be the corresponding movement function? Well, we uh, want one vector, 0, maybe 0, 1, to be moved up to the right. So uh, the, the black, the, uh, we want to move the black set. Uh, uh, 0, 0 should go to omega, omega. So uh, the upwards, right upwards movement should be something like omega, omega. And the downwards movement, that's the same one as before. That's 0, 2 omega, 0 minus 2 omega, 2 omega doesn't matter. Okay, um, so uh, the corresponding matrix for that is uh, 2 pi to the v w to the minus transpose is omega, 0, omega, 2 omega. Just plugging this over uh, this in. And uh, that means that 2 pi w to the minus transpose is omega times 1, 0, 1, 2. Or w is pi over omega, 2 minus 1, 0, 1. OK, uh, now uh, Peterson Middleton tells us that uh, G is uh, exactly de is determined by its values on W times KL, where K and L are integers. Now, plugging that definition in, uh, then this says that we need to measure the values 2 pi K over omega minus pi L over omega and L times pi over omega. Just plugging that in. And uh, I take the pi over omega out, uh, and uh, then that just means pi over omega, 2k, 2k minus L, and L times pi over 2. OK, uh, now, as before, we said p equal to omega and q equal to omega over pi. Remember, that was the optimal setting that we derived for parallel setting, for parallel scanning. And now what we need to measure is pi over p times 2k minus L, and L over Q. OK, uh, so this is the spacing in the angle. That's 1 over Q, as before. But now, look, uh, let's fix L. Then the spacing uh, between, uh, excuse me, that's, uh, excuse me, that's, uh, that's the spacing in S. That's 1 over Q, and that's as before. Uh, but this one over here, um, now, take L fixed, for example, or take L even, uh, then only the even values of, uh, um, then we need only, to, then we need only measure 2 pi k over p. So the spacing between two measurements, the, the spacing between the sensors that we need is uh, between two angles that we need, excuse me, uh, now is now 2 pi over p. And it used to be pi over p, right? I mean, just um, I think I didn't do this right. So look at this over here. Um, the, the, for fixed L, we only need to measure 2 pi k over p. So the difference between two angles is now 2 pi over p. And it used to be pi over p. So finally, what we need to measure is half the data. And that completely explains, I mean, that's completely equivalent to the motivation that I gave you. The, um, the definition that I have here now is exactly the same as in the motivation upwards. OK, uh, so uh, what does that mean? If we slightly change our scanning scheme, then less values have to be measured. And uh, to get uh, the same resolution, and um, if I fix the re resolution, that simply means that uh, we have less radioactive exposure for the patient. And in fact, that is true. And that is why this is really used in practice. And uh, well, it really halves the radioactive exposure for a patient, which is definitely nice. <laughs>